Hey, YouTubers. <laughs> hey, Facebook friends. Good morning. Glad to see you this morning. Welcome to Hanging with Hal in the morning. <laughs> I'm Hal Bruni, of course. Hey, Shay. Rollo. Good morning, brother. Good to see you. Hope y'all doing good this morning. <laughs> Happy Tuesday. Hey, Patricia. Good morning. Chris Arnold. Good to see you, brother. Happy Tuesday. Hope y'all doing well out there. It's a glorious Tuesday here in Morgan City, y'all. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a little thankfulness for today because I am extremely thankful that the garbage man came today. <laughs> Glad the garbage truck came because they didn't come on Friday or they messed us anyway. And my garbage was piled up all over the place. And I had crabs in my garbage. <laughs> so i um, thankful for the garbage people this morning. Thank you all very much. Justin Knox, good to see you. Hey, Sandra, good to see you this morning. Praying for Jamie out there. Hey, Lori, good morning. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Good to see y'all this morning. I miss some Bristol, Tennessee. Last time I was up there, I was with Wayne, and we were playing the race up there. Uh, that, we played up there with uh, Travis Tritt and um, Dirks Bentley. We had a great time. <laughs> Hope to make it back to Bristol sometime soon. Heck of a race, too. I love that track. <laughs> hey, Renee, good to see you this morning. Jeffrey, good to see you, brother. Amen for the garbage man. I'm glad, I, glad to see I wasn't the only one, Lori. <laughs> hey, Sue, good morning. Hey, Lou, good morning. Good to see you over there. Can't wait to make it back to the Neon Shack. Hope you and Randy are doing good. Uh, a little serious note this morning, y'all. We're sending our thoughts and prayers out this morning to a lot of folks in the Morgan City area and the Leonard family especially because um, we lost the icon in Morgan City. We lost Mama G over the weekend. Her funeral was, was yesterday, and I, I had to go out of town for a spell so I didn't get a chance to make it. Um, so our thoughts, prayers, and condolences are going out to uh, Mama G's family and everyone who is or is a part of the Mama G's uh, or the uh, Mama G's family community I should say because Mama G's is a great place here in Morgan City. She's had her place for years and years and the families run that place for years and years. It's a great place. Um, if you come down to Morgan City check out Mama G's. She's left a heck of a legacy. And uh, we're going to love and miss her. We all love her and we're going to miss her a bunch. So um, just, just a little serious note right there for everyone hurting in Morgan City and missing Mama G this morning. So, hey, Jerry, good to see you. Spanky, good to see you, brother. Ryan, JJ, good morning. Good to see you all this morning. Hey, Kathy, good morning. Thanks for being here today. Nine o'clock break time, y'all. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know, it's Storytelling Tuesday, and I hadn't really thought about what I'm going to play today because uh, I've been thinking about this story I've been wanting to tell y'all for a few days. So, I'm going to tell you my story about Mr. George today. <laughs> my mom was born on the 4th of July. I don't know if a lot of y'all know that, but my mom was born on the 4th of July. And we have a party for her every year right now. Uh, they've been living on the Bayou Tesh for years. So we usually go out there and have um, crabs for her birthday, her favorite. And um, we uh, have some, her friends over and family, of course. And it's always a, a great celebration. Uh, but several years ago, uh, we were there, and my Aunt Joan was there. And my Aunt Joan, uh, later on in life, married a guy named Mr. George. And Mr. George was a, was a short guy. He was a small fella, you know. And um, I'm not sure how old he was at the time. He was probably in his, this was a few years ago, and he was probably in his mid-70s, I would think. And... Um, maybe close to 80, but he looked really good, and, and uh, he had a, uh, I'm not sure exactly where he was from, he told me on this day where he was from, it was somewhere in Eastern Europe, I'm not sure if it was Poland or um, Czechoslovakia or somewhere like that, but he was originally from there, and uh, had an accent, and he was always a nice guy, but I never really had a chance to talk to him a whole lot, I was always in and out, you know, um, but on this 4th of July, we had a chance to talk a little bit together. Hey, Tim Melton, good to see you, brother. Hey, Craig. Hey, Shauna, good morning. Good to see y'all. Chad Henry, good to see you, brother. So, but this 4th of July, me and Mr. George had a chance to uh, have a little chat. And he had heard about some of my travels and how I was uh, going back and forth to Africa. I'm not sure if I was still going back and forth at the time or I had just uh, come home. But anyway, Mr. George and I had a chance to talk for several minutes together, just me and him. And we're talking about our travels and where we had uh, been in the world. And he proceeded to tell me his story. And his story was this. He said, Hal, you know, 
when I was growing up, we were originally from Eastern Europe. My family, my parents were teachers and they taught in China when I was a young boy. Well, while we were living there, the communists started taking over. Socialist communists started taking over China. And we started getting persecuted, you know, um, singled out for our beliefs, not going along with the party. So we ran. And we ran back to Eastern Europe, he said. We ran to this country where we stayed for a while and everything was okay. But then the socialists started moving in. And we had to run again. And we ran to this country. And we were okay for a little while. But then again, the socialists started moving in. And we had to run. And then he proceeded to tell me, he said, Hal, I see it happening here now. I see little by little it creeping in on us. You know, and a lot of people don't understand or realize what's going on. He said, but I see it creeping in and I see it creeping in. He said, and I have to tell you, when they try to take over here, we've got nowhere else to run. This is the last place on earth people can come to escape socialism and everything that goes along with it. And if you're not sure what that is, you know, you've seen some of it really take place in the last several months. Uh, Mom, I'm telling a story about you today, Mr. George. <laughs> hey, Jacob Gibbons, good to see you. Angel, good to see you. So uh, he said, we have nowhere else to run. The rest of the world looks to America as the beacon of freedom, and people come here to escape socialism and the other types of totalitarian regimes that persecute people that don't go along with their way of thinking or agree with their political beliefs. And I sat there and listened to this story and just took it all in on the 4th of July. And I thank God that I was born an American and that America will never be a socialist country because we are the last beacon of freedom in the world. We still are for the time being. And, uh, you know, the thing about socialism is I'm on a journey the last few years. I've discovered kind of my, one of my purposes in life. I'm on a journey to perpetuate happiness and healing in the world. Y'all know that. I do it, try to do it every morning with a song and a smile. Socialism goes directly against you being able to pursue your own happiness, which is one of our greatest gifts in this country. You have the right to pursue happiness, whatever that means to you. Do you know how odd that is in the world? What other country gives, you know, their citizens that? And you know why? Because every other country, their rights are given to them by a government or by some leader. And in this country, our rights are given to us by God. And socialists can't stand that because it's a godless religion of a political organization. So, uh, you know, socialist dict socialism dictates to you what you are, how you can think, uh, where you can go, who you can associate with. You know, and I don't want to be like that. I'm sorry. I'm, it's too bad. You know, uh, they want you to shut up, do what you're told. Go along like everybody else, and if you don't, there's going to be consequences. You know, we've heard <laughs> Barack Obama was the first person to use the term, uh, elections have consequences. So, we've seen some of the consequences of socialism in this country already. You know, uh, in the last several days, and the last several months, they've threatened to put us on lists. They've threatened, and they have canceled people online. You know, if they cancel you online, it greatly reduces your ability to socialize and communicate with people, do business, 
or uh, any kind of commerce, buy and sell uh, your goods and services. So, you know, uh, we've also seen, and I'm telling y'all how tired I am of this. I don't know if y'all are tired of, of this like I am, but I'm tired of going to Facebook and YouTube. Are we back? I was afraid they were cutting me off midway. Because <laughs> I'm tired of going to Facebook and YouTube and seeing a banner across posts telling me what I should think, you know, and not allowing me to see other content or what other people think. You know, that is the antithesis of what this country was founded on. And no corporation, I don't care if, if you own the platform or not, should be able to, if it's a public platform like these are supposed to be, they have no right to censor us like that. They have no right to cancel you. You know, they sold us this bill of goods for social media and these platforms as being open, free platforms. And they are no longer that. You know, so if you want to go check me out on Parler <laughs> or me, we go do that, please. Hey, Tina, good to see you. Hey, Pat and Jay, good to see you all this morning. And I'm about to wrap this little story up. You know, uh, so... A lot of folks uh, call the style of music that I do, or that I like a whole lot, and a lot of us enjoy and have been for years. A lot of us call it, uh, yeah, I know they cut me off, Sue. Hey, April, good morning. A lot of us call what I like to do mostly, because I do all kinds of stuff, but a lot of folks like to call what I like to do outlaw country. <laughs> they say, oh, it's outlaw country. And that's true, and that has a lot of different meanings for a lot of different people. You know, some people think uh, it's outlaw country because uh, Merle Haggard was in jail. Or uh, Dave Allen Coe was in jail and they're outlaws. You know, a lot of us think that, I, you know, I've never been in jail, thank goodness. Uh, but a lot of folks like me think outlaw country is uh, the freedom of expression and the freedom to not go along with uh, exactly what the rest of the music industry is doing and kind of following your own path, writing your own songs, saying what you say the way you want to say it without anybody else getting in the way, you know. Yeah, it's getting scarier and scarier, and that's why we're doing what we're doing today, April. So, you know, I'm going to leave you with this. Mr. George said, there's no way else to run in the world. Where are we going to go? You know, if we lose America, there's nowhere else left to run. So I'm going to tell you all this. I'm an American. I'm a proud American. And when the socialists take over, if we allow them to, then being American, what, funda what fundamentally it means to be American, will become illegal. You will no longer have the right to pursue happiness or worship or communicate or congregate like we're used to in this country. Because believe me, if there's one thing socialists know how to do, it's this. They know how to use the tools of the government to punish and bludgeon those who disagree with them. You know, they're already putting us on lists. I'm sure they have plans for the re-education camps somewhere. You know, so I'll leave you with this. When you outlaw being an American, I will be an outlaw. So I'll leave you with that. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> That's my little story for you today. That's my story of Mr. George and his bout with socialism. And it's one of the reasons why I feel so strongly the way I do because I've seen it firsthand myself. I've talked to many people who've experienced it and had to run, leave their whole entire lives and families behind, run for their lives, literally literally run for their lives. So that's why I feel so strongly about this, y'all. And I just want to share my feelings with you. You know, we don't try to get political on this little group. We try to keep it, you know, as a haven of positivity. But we're in a very strange and difficult time in this country right now. And I think it's very important that you exercise your freedom of speech while you still can. So... Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate that. Thank y'all very much, y'all. Hey, it's Tuesday. <laughs>
Thank you, brother. Hey, I don't hate anybody. You know, I just love America. Thank y'all very much. <laughs> so good to see y'all on a Tuesday. Hey, Pansy, good morning. <laughs> hey, Paulette, good morning. Thank y'all for being here. Bruce, good to see you on a Tuesday. So I'll leave you one about, leave you with one. A song about my hometown. Your typical American, blue collar, family loving, God fearing town. I was born in a blue collar town where honest people can still be found. There's a difference between wrong and right, and hard work is the way of life. Every evening the sun goes down On this blue-collar town yeah! Well, I was born in a blue-collar town My daddy worked from sun up to sundown Six long days a week Yeah, with five hundred miles to feed but he was strong and he was proud Of this blue-collar town That's right! <laughs> hey, baby, good morning! There's Mr. Chris, the bitch's corner grocery store And that's where I broke my arm riding my skateboard Seems another memory I recall Every time I drive around This blue-collar town Hey, today, good morning! Oh, thank you very much, Sue. I love seeing you every day, too. Thank you for being here. Hey, Miss Candy, good morning! I was born in a blue-collar town I came back home to settle down To love my wife and raise some kids Yeah, just like my daddy did Every evening the sun goes down On this blue-collar town Spot that used to be my favorite fishing hole And that's the house Susie Johnson's dad come me Sneaking out their back door <laughs> Lord, it sure feels good All just hanging around This blue-collar town Thank you, Mom. I was born in a blue-collar town Where honest people can still be found There's a difference between wrong and right Yeah, and hard work gets away your life Another evening the sun goes down On this blue-collar town On a happy Tuesday! <laughs> On this blue-collar town <laughs> This blue-collar town yeah. This blue-collar town <laughs> Happy Tuesday, y'all, and God bless America! <laughs> Hey, thank y'all for joining me on this Tuesday and for listening to my story here on Storytelling Tuesday. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that, even though it was a little more serious today. Uh, we'll try to pick it up for you uh, and lighten the mood when we can. Hey, Janet, good to see you this morning. Thank you, brother. Good to see you, uh, Matt. Good to see you, brother. I appreciate that. So, uh, happy Tuesday, Janet. So, thank y'all for being here today, y'all. Uh, go out there. Have a wonderful Tuesday. 
uh, leave me some comments about what you got going on this week. Um, and please go to Parlor. Hit me up over there. Me, we, I'm just getting all that going. Uh, check us out over there, y'all. Um, I'm no longer on Twitter. So don't look for me there anymore. <laughs> and I'm not sure what's going to happen on Facebook or YouTube. You know, I'm not running. So they're going to have to kick me off. <laughs> which I'm sure they'll have no trouble doing uh, if they get a chance to. But um, So we're preparing to uh, fight the good fight on Facebook and YouTube, y'all, and go down swinging. <laughs> but hit me up everywhere else, y'all, and I hope y'all have a wonderful Tuesday. Uh, go out there, y'all. Spread some happiness and healing around this world. Go enjoy some America. Perpetuate some positivity. That's right. You got it, Rollo. <laughs> Spread some happiness and healing. Perpetuate some positivity. Go out there. Y'all spread some light in this world. Because Lord knows we need it. Y'all join us tomorrow for Wayne Wednesday. And in the meantime, peace. <laughs>